Hashem Yitbarach mechakeh lanu shenashuv alav. The whole year Hashem is waiting for us to make tshuva. But right now in Elul, this is the revealed time that this is clear, right? The Melech Basadeh. Ki yamim hem yamim em yamei ahava vekirva. These are the days of love and of closeness. Uvechol ha-chodesh ha-kadosh ha-zed latot eichal ha-melech p'tuchot. This whole entire month, the, the gates of the chamber <coughs> of Hashem are all open for every single Jew. Every single Jew easily can start to come back and open his heart more and more to his father and all the good that Hashem gives us. Right? This is the time that the voice of the loved one is beating out Pitchili, open me, open the door, open, open up for me, open up for me. It's what our neshama is screaming out. Right? We scream out to Hashem, help us make full tshuva in front of you. And the opposite is sometimes what we feel, that sometimes we feel there's darkness in these days. That's only happening so that you don't have too much light. That you don't chase too much light and then break your vessels. Right? So sometimes it appears like they're hard days, like they're darker a little bit. We'll be able to take out the sparks slowly but surely. Sometimes, right? In a certain person in a different situation, it could be this year you have it, next year you don't. It could be for a week you have it during Elul. It could be for two days you have it during Elul. And it could be for the whole month of Elul, the person has a situation where from Shamaim they're putting you into Katnut. They're putting you into constrictedness where everything comes to you a little bit harder. Right? Why? It's a test to see how you work from there. Sometimes you're going to have an Elul that every single day of Slichot you're there, you don't miss. You're, you're knocking it out, you're doing tshuva, you're fasting, you're doing everything you can, learning Torah, increased tefillah. And sometimes from Shamaim they put it, work from here. You're limited to this, shachrit mincha avit, slichot twice a week. This is what we're allowing you to do from Shamaim. Let's see how you deal with this. If you throw the toys out the trolley, you fail the test. Right? But if you say, okay Hashem, I get it. This is what you want, let's go. Full force in what I can. Right? That's the test. But it comes, it comes like that sometimes. Our, our job is, in this situation, to remember that Hashem is with us, even in the darkness. To stay close to Hashem in all the power. And not to get seduced by the poison and the... And the the lies, the falsehood of the sheker, of the yetzara, right? And to talk to Hashem and to not get soft on this, to not give up on this. Until Hashem opens up the gates for you. He has mercy on your soul. You called out to Him. Hashem, I'm doing it, but it's, uh, I want to feel you. I want to be with you, right? I don't feel it. And Hashem will have mercy on you and He'll open it up. Right? Even with that said, that sometimes you might not be feeling it, you have to pray to Hashem that He'll open up the gates for you. But your main job is to stay close to what you already have established, your daily seder, your daily uh, schedule that you don't pass on for a second, and all of the work that you got to do, right? Whatever it is. You got to keep doing what you got to do and whatever you have set up already. Why? Because from your place, you don't give up. You don't give up your place. In Elul, the, the, the internal aspect of the fact that the Jews want Hashem and Hashem wants the Jews. Like it said, Ani le dodi ve dodi li. Zoi ma'ut ha-tshuva. This is the essence of tshuva. Lirtsot et Hashem mitbarach velashuv elav. To want Hashem and to return to Him. V'ikar ha-avuda hi pnimit. The main way of doing this is internally. Right? We have the external work of tshuva, which is stopping to do what you're doing, regretting it, confessing it, 
and taking upon yourself to not do it again. We have that, right? And then to behave, obviously. But the main inner aspect of tshuva is to fix what's going on inside. To come closer to Hashem, right? What does this mean in, internally? To come closer to Hashem, to cling to Hashem, to live with a, a life that our life is completely with Hashem, with emunah, with true emunah, with tefillah, and with gratitude, saying thank you Hashem, right? And to feel Him. And the main way to do this, the footnote says, it's a quite a long footnote, but I read it earlier. The footnote says, the way you want to you want to increase your connection with Hashem, to feel Him, to live with Him, to make sure you're with Him at any stage, talk to Him. In between your tefillot, in between tehillim, in between the slichot, you're in shul and they're taking their time, they're talking, they're selling aliyot, talk to Hashem. You're on the bus, talk to Hashem. Your phone died, you got nothing to do, talk to Hashem. The more you do this, the more you're increasing that connection with Hashem, the more you're going to live a life that you're connected with gratitude and emunah and, and prayer. Hashem is not asking us for perfection. He's just asking us to, to put in a little bit of effort and to work, work hard with whatever we have at that given time. Every person goes through different stages in life. It's what you have at that time. Hashem, that's what He's asking of you. And from there you can have dveikut. Right? You can be clinging to Hashem. You can have akarat Hashem. You can see Hashem, why He put you in that situation. You can see all these things. And if this is what you do, even though you didn't completely fix yourself and you didn't do all the tshuva that you needed to do for your sins, even though that's the case, your tshuva is accepted. Right? Like we explained, what is the internal aspect of tshuva? It's to return our heart to Hashem. And with this, any person in any situation, in any stage, can be successful. To return your heart to Hashem with all your heart and to start to live with Him. That you can do from any point, no matter how high or how low you are, in feeling, in mental state, in whatever you are, you can do that, right? To sit, to breathe for two seconds and to return your heart to Hashem and just say, Hashem, I want to want you. I want to want you, right? I haven't even done anything, I haven't fixed anything but I, I, I want you, I want to feel you, I want to be with you. There's no such thing as completion and complete wholesomeness, right, for the, for the creations. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu, He looks deep into our hearts and into our kidneys, into our kishkes, and He sees that the person is doing whatever he can at the situation that he's in, in the, at that given situation, then Hashem brings him closer and closer to him. It starts to pull you in. And with the time, Bizat Hashem, with God's help, you'll also complete your tikkun and, and everything that you have to do in your actions and your habits and to become a better person. But this doesn't touch to the most internal part of tshuva. Right? We're going to go now. We're going to go now. Uh, perfect. Right, so just to summarize this, and then we're going to go a little bit deeper into what this is. One, Hashem Itbarach, Hashem is with us, loves us constantly. And what he sees in every single Jew is the most internal good point of that Jew. And with that, he's waiting for us, for every single Jew, at every stage and in every situation, that will come closer to him. Like a father that's waiting for his child to come back after he ran away, after he left the house. Like a father that's waiting for that day that he'll come back or his son's missing, God forbid. Right? Like he would be waiting just to give him that hug again. That is what Hashem's waiting like. Right? Tfilot for the Na'ar Moishi that's missing already 150 days or what his parents are going through. Right? But... Sat Hashem, Sut HaTzviah, in the Torah, Hashem Yeshua. And the words of the Yetzirah, it's as if, right, with the Yetzirah, what does He come to tell you? Hashem's angry at you, and He doesn't want you, now that you sinned, you're far. And it's all a complete lie, right? That's first things first. Second, what is the essence of tshuva? 
It's a decision to return to Hashem, to live with Him your complete life, with loyalty, with closeness, with dveikut, like it's written, Shuvu Israel, Shuva Israel, Ad Hashem Elokecha. Return Israel, come back, Am Israel, come back to Hashem your God. Three, Tikkun Amasim, fixing our actions, right? Even though this is not the essence of tshuva, of fixing the actions, right? The essence of tshuva is to live with Hashem. It is still an essential, essential condition to tshuva. It's the sign that a person does really want Hashem. If you really want it, really want it, really want it, it might be hard in the beginning to do it. But after a while, if you really want something, you get it, right? So if you really want to be close to Hashem, and you don't want to do that thing that you don't want to be doing, then at a certain point, you'd start to slowly but surely either decrease the amount you're doing it or stop it. Four. When you take a resolution upon yourself, when you set goals for yourself, when you try to change your actions and set new resolutions, right? It's only, only, only in the path of if you grabbed a little bit, you grabbed it. Right? The opposite is if you grabbed too much, you didn't grab anything. Right? So the, the, the resolutions that a person takes on themselves needs to be really from a deep place of knowing where you're at, knowing what you're capable of, and then pushing a little bit out of your comfort zone. But not way above, because if you go way above, that means you didn't grab anything. You grab something, even if it's a little bit, but you grab it fully, that means you grab something fully. It's something, it's one thing, right? But we're never trying to reach perfection because it's not possible. We want to grab one step and one step and one step and keep growing. Five. And sorry, another point on the resolutions. The resolutions need to be from a place of a th something that you take upon yourself that will for sure bring you closer to Hashem. Something that is improving the relationship, right? Something for you that has to be personal to you. Something that you take upon yourself that is actually going to change the relationship you have with Hashem. Mainly that's where you should focus your goal setting and your resolutions that you take upon yourself. It's something right, that's actually going to change it. Not sometimes maybe wearing a hat when you go to pray. Right? If you don't wear a hat. It's a nice thing, but I don't know how much it's going to really change your relationship with Hashem if you're still wearing sweatpants. Right? It's like... Unless you're doing it. That's where you're, if you're out there, you're there, right? But if that's what you're trying to, oh, I'm going to do that, maybe, you know, you can read Tehilim. Read Tehilim. I'm going to read three Tehilim that I didn't read. I'm going to add three Tehilim. I'm going to do something like that that's really going to improve that relationship. Five. When Shuvah is done in the right way, then, for sure, a person comes to Simcha, comes to joy. What is the outcome of tshuva? The immediate outcome of tshuva. A person is now closer to Hashem. What does that feel like? Amazing. You're clinging to Hashem. You have to feel calm, tranquil, happy. Because you're close to Hashem, who is giving and the source of all life and tranquility and passion and peace in the world. So if you're clinging to that at the core, automatically you should feel good. Even though your actions are still not perfect, this is not going to delay anything. This shouldn't change and it should not prevent you from feeling happy. Because from the dveikut and the closeness that you have for Hashem and the imunah and the faith that you have in Hashem, you don't need perfection for that. You just need to take upon yourself to try a little bit according to where you are at that point to tap into godly consciousness. And when you do tshuva properly, your nefesh starts to be filled with simcha, with joy. On the fact that you went back to your source and it's doing its job, the neshama needs to be clinging to its source at all times. When the neshama achieves that, even on the smallest point, it already feels amazing satiation and, and, and just joy, right? Meaningfulness in the fact that it's doing its essence, right? And that, right, that this is only when you're not listening to the Yetzara that's trying to lie to you as if Hashem is trying to get you to perfection and to be the best super Jew possible. Because of this mistake, it's impossible to be successful. 
And this also pulls a person down into depression and into despair. Rather, you should believe and listen to Hashem that is saying to you, I love you. Taste and see how good Hashem is. Hashem's right hand is out, outstretched to receive those who are making tshuva. Hashem is the one that's giving us and he's, and he's increasing the amount of times and He's always, always forgiving. This is what we need to believe. That's the, the Hashem that we need to tap into. Not the Hashem that, Hashem, that the Yetzirah paints us. That He hates us and He's going to kill us and He's going to punish us and for all these different things that we did. Right? That only comes because we're forgetting from Hashem. It only comes when we're putting distance in our eyes from Hashem. So is that the Hashem? Where were you at time-wise? Yeah, Ruch Hashem. Right, we had a footnote here that we could go back on. On the, on the idea that we have to fix our actions, right? But that's not that, that that's not the end all be all. We do have to. Why? Because if we really desire to be make tshuva, then we have to prove it somehow. And that's the only way to prove it is if you're actually becoming better, right? If you're actually changing. On that we have a footnote. By way of the mitzvot, Hashem revealed to us the proper way to live. Hashem announced to us by way of that, that whoever doesn't do that and goes against the mitzvot, meaning doing those that you're told not to do, or skipping over those that you are told to do, right? You are now suspending life. We are now putting a, a break in the circuit. Umimele, and when that happens, whoever doesn't return from their bad actions, whoever doesn't do tshuva on the bad or that interruption of the flow of life, and he continues to go against the word of Hashem, not only what did he ever, he messed up, he messed up his life, right? And that he, he started to make blemishes and cloudiness and, and disorientation and distance from Hashem and all these negative things. Not only that, also the whole entire creation, he's also showing that he doesn't believe properly. And it's clear then, obviously his tshuva is not real tshuva. Right? So on the one hand, fixing your actions is not the end, it's not the goal. It's not the goal. The goal is that your heart will be connected to Hashem at all times. And you live with Hashem in all situations in life. Right? But, if that's really where your heart is, you have to behave accordingly, right? And when you go against it, there is for sure real consequences for doing sins in the Torah that affect the whole entire globe, specifically Am Yisrael, and even more so those around us, our community, and our friends and our family, right? As men specifically, our sins affect our children, God forbid, or affect our wives, God forbid, affect the parnasa of everything, right? Every, that whole entire system that we are so and so influencing and responsible for. Everything that we do affects the whole entire the, the whole entire system, right? There's real consequences to our actions. With that said, the fixing of it is literally to make the decision that from this point on I want to live with Hashem. It is that simple. It is that simple that it makes it so hard, right? Because it has to be real, and it has to be sincere, and it has to lead that sometime in the near future, my actions will change because of that decision. Not just I'm going to decide that a thousand times a day, even though it's an amazing, amazing piece of advice, that whenever you fall, you reboot and you tap back into that. Right? It needs to be with a deeper desire to actually live that reality all the time, and to change your actions and to bring you away from the sins. So Zat Hashem, we'll take it next week. We're going to go deeper. I don't know if Instagram is ready for that one. So guys, move to Tzfat by then. Bracha v'atzlach, everybody. And uh, what's up? Here? Yeah, we have some people in here. Guys, we got a sneak peek into a private Chabura. Enjoy. And uh, hopefully we'll post this soon. Share with your friends. Thank you.